it is amazing the type of strength we can find inside of us if you want to succeed in this life you must fight against the spirit that tells you this cannot work you look here impossibility impossibility written everywhere except god helps you you can toil and toil but when god visits you and you experience divine encounter he changes your whole world the day you were conceived there were millions of potential human beings you were fighting with and you defeated all of them. You were born a winner. Who do you think the master will believe? <laughs> Moses' dream sent him into exile. Adopted son of Pharaoh became shepherd to Jethro in Midian. Your dream can reduce you to nothing. But if it happens, take heart. I have suffered it. That is when you regret the day you were born. But that was price being paid for dream. Joseph's imprisonment was a temporary setback. But that prison was going to serve as a springboard which from where he will be landed upon the throne of Egypt. So it was only Temporary setback. Reverend Robinson Onuchuku was preaching to the ministers and he made a statement that struck me. He said, every problem has expiry date. Every problem has expiry date. While in prison, two officials of Pharaoh came into the prison because they were accused. One day they had a dream, two of them in one night. And Brother Joe interpreted it. And at the end, they left him and he was begging one, the butler, please, as you are living here, remember me, I am a Hebrew. I was sold as a slave. He didn't want to disclose it was his brothers because the man would begin to think, what type of person are you? You must be very wicked for which your, your own family sold you. So he left that part. But here in Egypt, I did nothing. I was falsely accused and I'm here. Please remember me. And the man left and forgot Joseph. But Pharaoh had his own dream. And his magicians, the astrologers, the necromancers, the mediums, interpreters of medium, interpreters of omen, none could interpret Pharaoh's dream. That was when the butler said, Pharaoh, today I remember my sin. I was in prison because you were angry. I was accused before you. I had a dream. The baker had a dream. The same night, that Hebrew slave interpreted it. And what he said came to pass. Pharaoh, he said in three days' time, you will release the baker and hang him. And that was what you did. He told me in three days' time, you will release me and restore me to my position. Pharaoh, that was how it happened. If that boy can come here, we have no problem. Pharaoh said that we are not going to sit down. Nobody should sit until that boy comes here. And that was how <laughs> somebody called Joseph, the ex-prisoner uh, butler, is looking for you. He came calling. I could see him so curious. And what was his story? Pharaoh is inviting you, brother, sister, 
Pharaoh will invite you one day. I say Pharaoh will invite you. The king of the land will invite you. Let God orchestrate the circumstance that will make it happen. A harbinger will work for you. A catalyst will meet you. Hallelujah. Pharaoh told his dreams and Joseph interpreted it. It was as if a veil or scales fell off from the eyes of all the people. I should have known the meaning of this thing. What was the next thing? After he had explained you need to start a massive agricultural scheme and this and that, uh, uh, sow, harvest, and store because seven years of plenty will come. After that, seven years of famine. So, sow and reap and store so that when the famine starts, you'll begin to sell food. Wow. Where are we going to find such a man? In whom is the spirit of the gods? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without your consent, no man may lift his leg or his, or his, no man may lift his hand or his foot in the land of Egypt. So any day you want to go anywhere, before you lift your foot, I don't know whether, there was no phone then, so how will you get, how will you even get the permission? That's a way of saying everybody is under the control of Joseph. Shout hallelujah. Amazing. This was a new chapter that his dream opened for him. Your dream opens chapters for you in this life. So his brothers came to buy food in Egypt. And he was, they didn't recognize him, but he recognized them. And he was talking with them. And he accused them, you are spies. You came here to spy out the nakedness of the land. And he said, no, sir. You are servants. Who? You are servants. We are your servants. You are servants are sons of one man. We were 12. And today 10 of us are here. The youngest is with your servant, our father. And one is no more. And that one that is no more was who? Joseph. And he said, yeah, you have now opened the real matter. This is how we are going to know whether you are true to people. You will produce that youngest one. Any day he comes here, you are free. And he imprisoned all of them for three days. After that, he said, look, I fear God. That's why I'm bringing you out. I will only put one of you in prison. And that was Simeon. And you know Simeon. That's the violent one who with Levi finished the Shechemites. Perhaps that day Simeon was, in, was bent in killing him. And it was Judah who said what profit are we going to gain by, get, by killing our brother? Judah was the one that was profit oriented. Everything he thought of was business. How much to make? Judah, that was the wisest, the arrowhead, the spokesman. Reuben was Mumu. He would sit there. And it's Judah, number four, speaking on behalf of the family. Even before their father, it was Judah. 
So he put Simeon in prison, released them. Go bring your, go bring your brother. But as they were talking, and when they were pleading, and when they were whispering to one another, can you see what our sin has caused? When, that, when our brother was crying, I begged you people, and they were whispering. And Joseph was overwhelmed with emotions. He was overwhelmed with joy. Tears came, and he quickly rushed out, went somewhere and cried. And after crying, he washed his face before coming back. He was crying, not because he was in pain. He was crying. Not because he was sad, but he was crying. And it was a cry of joy. What God said about me has come to pass. God will make you weep. And the tears will be tears of joy. A day is coming when you will look back. You will look back. And you will see where God brought you from. You will see when nobody believed you. You will see when hopelessness surrounded you. You will see when you were nothing. You will see when the whole world was against you as it were. You will see that the Lord is faithful. You will see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. And he wept. Judah was addressing Joseph as my Lord. Yes, it comes to a point where those who said you are nothing, they will reverse what they were saying. Your dream will bring a season of affirmation. Somebody say affirmation. God will begin to affirm what he said to you. He only said I was in a dream and that was why they sent him to prison. Now they are the ones calling him Lord. My Lord, you are servant, our father. Told we, you are servant. That's why we had to read that long chapter, chapter 44. I wanted to count, but I was in a hurry, I couldn't count, to see how many times Judah addressed him as my Lord, addressed their father as your servant. Address themselves, we your servants. Affirmation. There was a day King Saul affirmed David and he said, my son David, you are more righteous than me. Because you are pursuing this boy as a criminal, you wanted him killed. You were showing he's a very bad person. A crook who wanted to overthrow you. And now you are saying he's more righteous than you. That is affirmation. That's, that's what affirmation is all about. Hallelujah. And there was another chapter opened to this man, Joseph. And it was a chapter of seeing. Seeing himself in the midst of family again. He had been away from, from family for 22 years. It's true, they sold you. They are yet your family. All my children have given the testimony that each and every one of them, there was a day I was so lonely. I was so lonely, lonely I locked myself up 
in my room and I cried and cried and cried. Three of them. Each person cried. Yeah. More especially in those days, we didn't have phone, phones. If we wanted to call any of them, we went to PNT or what do, what do you call it now? Nitel. And you pay money and you queue up. We did it once in a long while. It's not like today when you pick up your phone from morning to night you are calling. So they were dying of loneliness. Email came out. We had to go to Hysin, whatever, whatever. It was an office of the man who had it. So if email came, he would let us know. We want to send email, we will write it and send to him. Communication was hard. Then imagine Joseph for 22 years, no communication. He didn't know whether his father was dead. Nothing. And he had been in the midst of strangers. Some treated him well. Some treated him badly. The woman that was telling him, I love, I love, I love, I love. If I don't sleep with you, I will die. Eventually, the same woman sent him to prison with the accusation of rape. This man who had missed his family, look at him now in the midst of his family. And they are addressing him as my Lord, calling their father his servant, calling themselves your servants. That was a wonderful chapter. I don't know what you've been desiring. One of these days, your desire shall be fulfilled. Yeah. Just tell God what you are desiring. There was another chapter. The chapter of absolute fulfillment. Listen to 45, chapter 45 of Genesis verse 13. So you shall tell my father of my glory in Egypt. When you go back, by then he had revealed himself. Tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, which you have seen. Tell him the governor of Egypt, the man who imprisoned you for three days, was his very son, Joseph, the one he thought was dead. Tell him of my glory. Hallelujah. And before he died, he called his brethren and he charged them. He said, look, the Lord your God shall visit you. And when you are going back to the promised land, Dig up my bones or take my bones from here. Bury it in Canaan. When you see people talking of their death and burial, do you know what it means? It is fulfillment. You feel your life is worth it. That was the position Paul found himself in. And he said, for me to die is gain. To live is Christ. It's just to be here and be doing ministry. But it is, if it is for any other thing, I don't care. That's fulfillment. There is nothing new. It's just to remain here and do the work of God. If death comes, it's okay. Simon or Simeon, the prophet is here. The Lord told him, yeah, the salvation of Israel will be brought into the temple to the Christ. The Jesus you people have been waiting for. Because God told him, you will never die until your eyes will see Christ. And the day Christ was to be dedicated, the Lord jolted him. Go to the temple and you will see the Messiah of Israel. And he came and took Jesus from the hands of Mary. Blessed him. And he said, Lord, let it your servants to depart in peace. 
For my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. I want to die today. I don't want to live again. That's fulfillment. That was why I was telling you. I saw beautiful casket. Chooks was to be buried in. And we finished the funeral and I was telling Nat, his wife, and my wife, I said, how I wish. If not that our people are so superstitious, I will buy a casket like that. Two. And I will ship it over. Keep it. So that any day I die, you pull it out and bury me. Any day my wife dies, you pull out the second one and bury. But when I bring that thing now and keep in my house, rumors will start. The man is a terrible occultist. There are two coffins in his house. So when you hear somebody talking like that, death does not mean anything. And death doesn't mean anything to me now. You feel fulfilled. And it is God that gives that fulfillment. When you look back, you know, the Bible said godliness with contentment is great gain. Because the fulfillment is there with the little I have. So the door of fulfillment shall be opened unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. But now ensure that you are paying the dues regarding your dream. Give anything for your dream. Your dream matters. Don't make your dream cheap. Sarah died. And Abraham wanted to bury Sarah, the wife. And the children of Heth owned the particular side he was. And they came to console him. He said, I have a need. I want a space to bury my wife. Ah, my Lord. What are you talking about? You are like a king in armies. Look at our burial ground. Bury. He said, no. I want a portion of land. I'll pay money. They say, no, 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 no. They mention the name of the owner. He said, look, old boy, I want to buy it. He said, my Lord, have it free. He said, no. If you are to sell it today, how much will it cost? And the man said, I said, I don't want money. But he said, I want to pay. And the Bible said, he measured out the money and gave to him. And the cave of much Pella became his. That was where Jacob, his son, was buried. I'm sure when they dug up the bones of Joseph, that was where they said all his descendants in Hebron, West Bank, they said that's a spot. That's the grave of this people. You must run from cheap dream. Free, free. You say, I don't want any free thing. One day, they will say, you claim, you say it's your own. How much did you pay? And you lose it. Because those people had dream. They say, no, I want to pay. David went to Arauna, the Hittite. He said, my Lord, take the whole land. Look at, look at cow. Look at firewood. Sacrifice unto your God. David said no. <laughs> Around her, I want to pay money. My Lord, why are you mentioning? He said no, I want to pay. And he bought it. And that became the site of the temple. Hallelujah. That is vision. That is vision. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. No matter how small, have a dream. You can expand it. Above all, there is a dream of going to heaven. Anything it will cost you, make sure you don't miss it. If you miss that one, you have missed everything. 
you suffer here, and when this life is passed, you suffer again. And that is why I haven't seen that thing for which my vision of going to heaven is taken away from me. Be it money, be it woman, be it power, be it injury somebody inflicted upon my soul, I'm going to forgive. I want to go to heaven. We hope this message has inspired you. Thank you for watching. To other for this message, please call 080 God bless you.